Hey, hey, John here again. So I just finished installing this uh, 80,000 BTU Mr. Heater Big Max fella. <laughs> and uh, it took a couple of days to do. So if you don't have you know, the time or the patience to watch the entire video, uh, I'm just going to go around and show you some bullet points on what I did and maybe get some ideas there. If you want to see the entire video, obviously you can just watch after this and uh, I'll show you exactly what I did throughout the whole hey John here today today I want to go over and uh, start this project with a heater yeah, one of those uh, max uh, heater max or whatever the hell the company is uh, there's a few companies that make them but it's a propane deal 80,000 BTU so I want to hook up one of these I've been using a portable uh, uh, propane deal where you can just you know 60,000 uh, forced air kind of torpedo deal and it works good but it goes through a lot of gas so I want to hook this up and it's probably going to be in that corner over there, up somewhere. I'll have to figure that out. I'm just going to uh, start today with this project, and I'll take you along, show you step by step what I did, and uh, hopefully finish this in less than uh, a week. <laughs> I don't know how long it's going to take, but uh, we're going to hang this today, hopefully. And uh, I'm a solo act, so it's going to have to be a little bit of a, uh, I don't know, figure it out. Probably have to use a come along to get it up there. But I do want it up as high as I can because uh, the code is like eight feet off the ground. But I ain't worried about the code or any of that business. I do want it off so I don't bunk my head over there. Uh, so I'm probably going to hang something off the corner of the rafter. Maybe build some wood brackets. It might be at an angle so it blows it this way. What I'm looking at instead of blowing it straight across. Because, you know, if you blow it straight across, uh, what about this end of the door, you know, or garage. Uh, so I'm probably going to do a 45 angle up in there this is what my thought is and then blow it this way so let me get to thinking about building a, something up there where I can accept this uh, heater mount and all that so everybody's situation is different but there's power up there so that's one of the decisions I, I want to make uh, putting it there there is power over in that corner too could do it that way blow it this way but I do have some plans and blowing this wall out and uh, making uh, an extension here so I don't really want to mess with that corner I'd rather have it over here in this corner that way it can blow it at a 45 kind of towards that door and towards the main door like in this area and I have a ceiling fan up there that you know you could force the air keep try to keep the air down and rotate it that way so that's I think where I'm gonna put it is up in this corner somewhere and uh, another reason I want this corner is because I want the gas battle bottle outside I got this 100 uh, pounder here that I use for my portable uh, deal but like I said it goes through a lot of freaking fuel got it inside here and you know to, to load this up and uh, take it to to get uh, on a weekly but nah, it's not a weekly basis uh, every other week I don't know it goes through a lot of fuel this this other thing I have so hopefully this this one here won't take as much fuel but anyways uh, let me take it around back so again I want it in that back corner over there because this little shed area roof area it's just too cluttered half the time so getting that bottle in and out of there is going to be problematic when I got to fill it. So there's a spot over here in the corner that's why I want to do it in the corner um, just so I can I'll build a little uh, stanchion or something for there but it's got a little overhang here too so it'll protect the bottle and uh, then I can you know sneak around from the other side of the garage through the gate and get the bottle without having to clean all this junk out of here. So that's what the plan is. Let me get to building that piece of uh, stand, uh, you know for the ceiling there. Alright, so it looks like the first order of business. There's two brackets. Apparently this one goes here uh, because this is going to hang hang off or whatever, but this one has indents, the other one doesn't. So I'm assuming it's just to miss this cord. And uh, the other fellow there. So, and I guess you can mount this uh, horizontally too. I don't know. I'm just going to mount it to, or vertically rather. You can mount it vertically, but I'm going to keep it horizontal. The other side, I'm sure, it just bolts right on. So there you go. So now, when this is up in the air, I'm gonna go. I gotta go get some uh, two by fours. But up there, I'm gonna build that cross member uh, at a 45, and uh, this will be so I can stick the mount this just to the wood. They got it uh, where you can use rods, threaded rods, up into your joist. I'm not gonna do that. Holy bananas! Eight dollars for one board eight dollars it's not it's not presser treated it's not even douglas fir regular bent up crooked ass spruce eight dollars 
A dollar a friggin' foot. That's unbelievable. All right, so I, I kind of want the, the fan or the uh, unit to blow this way, M maybe more like here. Uh, so I made a mark here. Uh, where is it? Right there. And it goes across, plugs in just after this uh, junction box there for the electric. And then all you got to do is uh, make the same board twice once you find your angle and measure back tw 20 inches to there because that's what that you know frame is 20 inches apart from one to the other uh, something like that a little extra support five dollars worth of scrap <laughs> i'm down to a dollar maybe two dollars worth of scrap anyways uh eight dollars a board so i'm thinking uh putting a hook up here but i don't have a hook or an eye or anything like that so what i do have is this little tractor uh thing you know goes into a uh, tongue on a um you know like a trailer for a little garden tractor so i'm just going to drill a hole through the side send this puppy through put a cotter pin on that side so that'll be my uh little hook for when i use the come along so then it'll be uh straight down here come along and i'll have to uh, uh hopefully it'll reach over here grab onto something here and then you know we'll ratchet it up yeah something like that <laughs> so i got my little doodad just drilled a hole through the through the rafter there Put a little pin on it, got the little pulley hooked on that, so it's going to drape down here. Pull it, I'll put the uh, machine or the uh, heater right there on the bench, and then I just got it strapped around and up right there, and that should do the trick. That's a little questionable, but uh, that should do the trick. So, yeah, here's the plan. I'm favoring it about an inch towards the back because that fan a little bit heavier than the front. Uh, so when I pick this up, hopefully it won't spin around, twist, and knock all this crap off the <laughs> shelves. Uh, but I got a load bar here. Once I get it cinched up, pinned up against there, uh, I'm going to put this load bar under it just to have it, because, you know, this will probably hold it in place, but because uh, I have to mark holes and drill out stuff, so I'm going to need uh, need that thing secure. So let's do this, huh? Let's pick her up, squish it up there, and uh, position it in place. Hey, eh, we have lift off. Let's go. <laughs> Measured wrong. Measure once, cut twice. <laughs> Idiot. I guess I'm gonna to have to get into my expensive lumber. I gotta add another stringer. I'll probably double them up because it's gonna take two boards anyways. Uh, so I measured 20 inches. I guess I measured the wrong side of the board. Because <laughs> here I'll show you. So my measurement's wrong. The nailer, it's not gonna stretch across. Well, you probably you probably get what I'm saying, but I'm just gonna add a uh, two by four on. I need to say I gotta add one here, the length, and add one there because it matches up there. But look, I'm way off. So I don't know how I did that. Maybe I saw 20. These are 20, or maybe they're 19. <laughs> I don't know. But it's easy enough to fix. I just have to spend more wood money on my wood. Uh, but let me do that real quick. Cut up a few pieces and and uh, go with that. <laughs> well, that was a $16 mistake. But the good news is now it's more more durable, more rigid, and uh, I didn't even jack it up again. I just left it like that, put the board on there, and twisted it, and it's kind of just sitting there. It's, it's favoring that side. I got that just there for support, but I'm going to add these. I'm just going to um, clamp them, and then, uh, and uh, you know, just clamp the, uh, the edges there, straighten things out. That's pretty much where I want it, right there. And then we'll get some, uh, I'll drill some pilot holes for some lag bolts. And that should be that. Uh, because the way I'm doing it, I'm not going to send threaded rod up, you know, to uh, catch a support. I'm going to do it this way, but you can barely get a drill in here. So I'm going to have to mark these, all these holes, and then just um, loosen these clamps up and slide her over a little bit, drill the holes. Do the same thing on the other side, and then uh, make my pilot holes for uh, the lag bolts, and just do it that way. Uh, so. I had everything mounted. Oh, let me get up here. So I put legs in, three legs on each one. And then uh, just for good measure, I drilled right through 
with a big old uh, engine bolt, a head bolt, and uh, I'll have to go get some nuts to secure it that way. So then, just the lag bolt should do it. But these, uh, you know, coming straight through the board, that is definitely going to do it. It's just a, like I said, a four inch or five inch, whatever it is, bolt. It just worked out perfect. All right, she's hanging out by herself. It's pretty sturdy. So I guess next up, uh, let's tackle the vent. This should be fairly easy. Come right off of here at a 90 go right through that uh, back wall there. Almost in four feet. Maybe we'll take some of this gold back. Get, get uh, what's that? Eight. See, this is like $35 worth of wood there. So that should cover the, the pipe I need. Four inch pipe. So let me go do that. Get some pipe. Figure that out. That should be easy. And then the wiring. And then, uh, then the gas pipe, the gas line, maybe a thermostat, I don't know, a couple other things I've been reading in the directions there, but let's get to it. Yeah, so after taking them wooden bars of gold there back, I got uh, three sections of two foot pipe, four inch, and two little collar, thimble collars, in case I mess up my hole, and two uh, elbows. So this should be straightforward. Um, the directions are, you know, saying you can use single wall. Single wall metal, this galvanized metal there. Um, as far as the termination on the outside goes, uh, this isn't like, it's just a, it, it's kind of like, I'm gonna treat it like a water heater, uh, a gas water heater or like a gas uh, furnace, you know, it just needs to vent and. Uh, so from here to this wall, like, I might get away with one pipe. So I just made a little uh, hole here for to get my jigsaw in and the pipe is a little bit, uh, Here's what I did. I just kind of eyeballed it. Oh, almost dropped it. Just kind of eyeballed it to, uh, you know, to here, to where it plugs in, and gave it a slope for the condensation. So I drilled a hole at the top there. I don't think this has to be exactly accurate uh, because everything's flexible. So I'll go trace it on the other side of the, the wall there. Just, you know, cut it out. Send a pipe through, and that'll be that. <laughs> There's my hole. I uh, cut out with a jigsaw, as round as I could. Just followed the, uh, I, I went about an eighth inch on the outside of the line I traced. The pipe fits through, and I think I'm gonna get away with, uh, with one section of pipe. <laughs> Two feet, they say the shortest route possible. That's the shortest route possible, uh, because you have to be a certain amount of feet away. I think, uh, I don't know. From, from the wall or whatever because I'm an angle kind of shortcutted the system so let's go in here and take a peek all right so I just got the one section there it's going to come out there one elbow two of two of us but you know on the other side of the wall I'm just going to have it spouted down you'll see so I think I'm going to get some screws and pop this sucker in and I'm you know, you could silicone around the uh, the thing, but I think I'm going to just add some insulation around, uh, you know, to fill in the, the gap there. You'll see in a sec. So let me get that hooked up. All right, so I just sent it through from the other side. I think that's just enough room for the elbow, but uh, let me go show you on the outside. So if you're worried about, uh, like, being double insulated, what you can do is take, like, this is a 6-inch pipe, and that's a 7-inch pipe. So you could take a, the next size pipe up, and cut your hole there, send a section of pipe, I think that's like maybe maybe a foot or two, comes out on the other side too. And then you can run your six inch pipe inside of that and stuff it with insulation, right? So then you, if you're worried about, you know, passing through without a thimble. Wow, that came out way better than I expected. So there's literally no, no room to, to even stuff insulation. And there's a really tight fit there. And this, uh, I got two screws here, one, two, and one on the bottom. Really tight fit. It's like way better than I thought it would be. I'm not banging on it. So that worked out really good. One section of pipe, so two feet to, to the outdoors. And uh, the, the collar on the other side pulled in nice and tight. It's right up against the clapboards. This doesn't move in or out a bit. Uh, so there's some more stuff I could take back. One of those collars and two of them pipes. <laughs> Cha-ching. All right, what's next? Uh, probably electric, I would imagine. Oops, turn this phone off. 
Uh, so the pipe's done. The mounting the pipe. Let's do some electric. <laughs> Forgot to do something. Uh, so first of all, I don't know if I pointed out that this uh, horizontal is supposed to be on an upslope of one inch per foot. I don't know how you're going to measure that, but uh, I think it's for condensation. I'm not sure why, but this doesn't have a condensation pump or anything. So it does have a fan that blows it, forces it out. So I don't think it's extremely important if you don't get exactly one foot, one inch per foot. But anyways, I didn't worry about that. What I just thought of is um, I forgot to convert this to uh, propane. So I'm hoping that that's the panel that comes off. I believe that's the panel. At least looking at the direction, it looks like this is the panel. And it does look like I can get it off of there without taking this thing down. I got so in a hurry of putting this thing up and putting things together. I got to convert that to uh, LP. That would totally suck if I got to take this thing back down. So I think... Uh, Just these four bolts. It is just the four bolts. Mistake. Almost a mistake. And I think you guys looks like the same same bolts. I'm gonna take these four bolts out and rotate this sucker forward and change all them uh, one, two, three, four, five. Five uh they all the same. They're not all the same. Two of them are short, two of them are long. This must be short. Don't know which ones are long, I'll figure it out later. Uh, these are short. Probably going to be a little more challenging on a ladder. But better than taking it apart. And I think this just rotates forward. Uh, I don't think there's much room in this uh, wiring. <laughs> the LP has a much finer hole than the uh, natural gas. That's all there is to it. Otherwise, they're identical. So just a smaller orifice. All right, so I'm just going to switch these out, and then there's something we got to do up here. I was reading, reading about, but it looks fairly easy too. Replacing a spring must be a weaker spring, or maybe a stronger spring. I don't know. We'll get to that in a second. Let me get these in here. So this is the valve, it's still tilted forward. That big uh, flathead back there. Let's see if we can do this one-handed without falling off a ladder. All right, anything in there? I'm gonna have to put this camera down, I guess. All right, so the first piece off is just a little cap with a rubber ring on it, which the new kit comes with it. And then uh, what you've got left with is a piece of plastic in there, so I'll unscrew that, and I'm assuming there's a spring behind that, and I'm assuming the spring is a different tension spring than uh, you know the other guy, or the new guy. Yeah, the natural gas one is a really weak one. Really weak spring. This one's a little stiffer, but either way, um, we're gonna put this back in, and then put that plastic. Where to go? Somewhere up there. They want you. To, they say discard the old ones, use the new ones, but they're identical parts. Uh, so I don't worry about that. But this is how you adjust the pressure, you know. Uh, so it's saying to when you put the spring in, you put that the next black cap in, the secondary one, and go seat it all the way down and then back it off one and a half turns so that's what we're going to do and that probably alone is going to run everything and then apparently you're going to need a, a, a w a water manometer <laughs> that uh used to adjust it and then you would just turn that plastic screw where is it you would just turn this plastic screw to uh while your meter is hooked up to the desired number so putting it at one and a half is probably going to be at that desired number. That's what I'm going to go with. I'll deal with it. Cross that bridge if I have to as far as if it needs an adjustment. But I'm pretty sure it ain't going to. You just set it at one and a half and you'll be fine. I mean, if we didn't do nothing with this and ran it on natural gas, it was set up to begin with. They didn't, you know, natural gas is a different WC level. But, you know, from what I'm reading, I'm just going to put it at one and a half. Screw it down to one and a half. I mean, screw it down all the way. Back it off one and a half. 
and just leave it and I'll uh, put the cap back on and call it a day. Alright, I just took this cover off. I think I'm going to do the wiring next. Uh, it should be straightforward, easy. So I got, I bought a switch that has, a, um, I'll show you in a second, but so just wire this up and then uh, I'm going to run a, uh, a wire over there for the thermostat control. Hook the thermostat over there because the heat will be blowing this way and I want the thermostat far away so it'll heat the whole place plus that fan is going to be helping out. Uh, anyway, so putting that switch in, I'm going to have a switch up there to turn this unit on and off uh, if need be, like a safety switch because uh, that's on a fuse and that goes down to a, a CGF there but it also goes to a fuse panel. Alright, so and then uh, the reason why I do the electric now, because I got the exhaust hooked up, I got or the uh, vent hooked up, I've got everything hooked up. I'm not, you know, I'll run gas pipe. I'm, my plan is to run black pipe, gas pipe outdoors, and uh, do it that way. Propane tank will be outside. But in the meantime, let me get this electric hooked up in the thermostat, and then hook up a portable tank, just to see if this booger works. Yeah. Uh, might be a little noisy. Start to get cold here. I gotta run that portable heater. Uh, so I'm just gonna start here and uh, put some Romex go that way with it, but I'll wire it here and I also have to do my uh, uh, thermostat, so I'll run wires to go that way with it, like I was saying. Wow, I guess I need a better screwdriver. Stripping them out. Uh, so I'm sure there's just two wires in here. So it'll be easy to wire up. I'm saying. Just gonna run some, some wire, right? And uh, staple it up on the on the on the uh, boards over that junction over there. 15 feet of wire ought to do the trick. I only go four feet max. All right, so let me do that. I'll get this wired up. Get that piece in there. Staple this up and get over to that side of the box so we can see what's going on. And poof. Just like that, we ran, uh, got the thermostat wire, ran it over to the wall, didn't do the thermostat yet, and wired this and put that switch in over there, I'll show you that in a second. Uh, so, nothing to, nothing to comment, this is basic white on white, you know, and then I put the green in uh, the ground, bolted it to the back there. So, it's only a heater, doesn't have cool, so, I'll leave it like that. And um, then do the thermostat over there. Like I said, I think I'm just going to temporarily hook some gas up just to see if this booger works. And then, then start on the, the actual gas line. I'm going to use half inch, uh, half inch uh, black pipe there. Uh, so basically, I put one of these pilot uh, switches in. So when this is red, you know it's on. I have to label this uh, heater on off switch. So it's off right now. That's on. I already tested it over there. Um, so like I said, let me go do the thermostat and hook some gas up and see if this booger works. All right, so the wire comes here. and It's probably not a good idea to put this uh, thermostat right next to the door here, but it's my project, so I'm going to do it my way. Uh, and and uh, the, the thermostat I bought, it's just a cheapie here. Just a, um, it does have cool and heat, but it was only 19 bucks cheaper than the rest. So over there on uh, the Mr. Heater, I used all in blue, red, green, and white. Uh, blue is normally like common if you need if you want a uh, like a remote control or something for your heat. Uh, red is usually power. Green is almost always fan, and white is heat. So hopefully that's uh, going to work out this way because I've got on here I've got G which is fan, R normally power, and of course uh, W for, for heat. they got Y here too. I'm assuming that's their cool. I see some stuff they don't even use, RC and, and uh, a bunch of stuff. But anyways, let me mark this up. I'm just going to put this in there. Um, this normally comes through a wall, the wire, you know, but because i got it sitting there. I just kind of notched out a little piece here for this back plate and skidded it a little bit here. So, um, so something like this. And I'll have it in this little groove there. I'll mark that. And uh, I can put the uh, wire this up and stuff you know, the wire back in the, because it'll have a little cavity 
for the back side of this. So anyways, let me get that hooked up and uh, see if that works, yeah? Yeah, I'm thinking something like that. I could staple this wire up there a little bit better. Get it in the groove. Uh, so just got the white, the red, or the wrong terminal. <laughs> white, red for power, G for fan. And uh, that's it. I'll put this little folder over it. Seriously? Are you supposed to get a little screwdriver in here? Must be a number one. That is extremely thin. I gotta get a number one blade there. Give you a little tiny hole, and then uh, and this this should pop over that, right? <laughs> hey, it's running right now. I uh, I hooked up a tank. So, so I'll go over this uh, where I got this uh, regulator here. I got it at Tractor Supply, and uh, it's just got covers for for when it's outdoors. Um, so, because I didn't know what what regulator to get, because the instructions don't have enough, and it's just a 20 pound tank here, just running it temporarily. So I I, uh, I just got this hose there connected. I just temporarily connected it, you know, to there with a reducer or whatever. So it's running fine. It's throwing out heat, right? And uh, for about 10 minutes, I'm sitting here and then it, and it shut down. And I was like, oh, that's weird. But then looking at the uh, at the, the control panel of the light, it's blinking slow, it just means it's not calling for heat. When it blinks fast, like right now, it's blinking fast, you can't see it, but then it's calling for heat. There's a little trouble troubleshoot guide in that direction. So everything looked normal, but it, it wasn't producing. So I thought, well, you know, because like I said, there's no, no directions about an, a tank, using your tank or a, a, you know what, what regulator you use. So like I said, this is a dual stage regulator. I bought it at Tractor Supply. They had single stage, they had a low pressure one, a high pressure one. Uh, but there's no really indication of you know, what you should have. So I bought this dual pressure thing, and, uh, or a dual stage thing, and it seemed to, be, seems to be working fine. Like I said, it shut down. So it's been running about 30 minutes now. The first time it ran about 10 minutes. So after the 10 minutes was done, it says it's calling for heat. So I walk over here and I take off this damn, uh, this plate, right? And then the thing started working again. Uh, it says, so it's all wired up and then you put this, uh, you screw this down to that and it makes contact. I don't know if you saw. And uh, I put this plate over it. And like I said, about 10 minutes in, it just shut down. So I took it off. Oh yeah, I took, it must be uh, for theft or something, I took it off um, the faceplate here and it's been running about 30-40 minutes now and if you look close, it says remove on this little stem here. So I'm thinking maybe this just is pinched and this mechanism can't work. I went through the directions, I don't speak Spanish but the English part uh, went through, there's nothing about removing that thing so I don't know if I'm supposed to remove it or not, this is a cheapy uh, Cheapy thing, it only cost uh, 20 bucks. But I was looking for the dial kind, the old dial kind. I think I got one in the basement. I might have to, I don't know. Uh, so anyways, what I did is I just touched this. Oh, see, I just touched that. You hear the furnace? It just kicked off the furnace. I just barely touched that. So <laughs> I think the thing is uh, needs to be removed. Yeah, the flames went out. So the, the furnace, w oh no it didn't. It jumped there for a second, but I bet you, uh, I don't know if you heard that, but if I touch this, because you know, before I touched it, you, you hear it, the, th the fan or the uh, flame just went out. So I think that thing needs to be removed. Yeah, the flame's out now. So it's got to go through a little recycle deal. So maybe I'll just try to remove this thing. I don't know, but I'm kind of excited. The heater works, kind of. <laughs> Uh, this is low voltage, I shouldn't get shocked. I'll be damned. I'll be damned. I'm serious, it's just a little plastic tab. And that's, uh, it knows... Wow, that's, um, that's amazing. If you get this Honeywell Home thing, <laughs> it says nothing. Absolutely nothing about it. 
uh, you just have to trust me. I went through three times figuring, because it does say remove, but I didn't, it's just a piece of paper. I didn't see that until, uh, until, until afterwards. I can hear it kicking on now, the heater. So I got it on 90 degrees, ain't that some shit? I got it on 90 degrees, so it is working. Let me just plug this in here. Ain't that some crap? A little piece of paper affecting the whole operation. So that flame should be on. Yeah. All right. So this thing is working good. I don't know how long that's going to last. All right. So I'm not happy with the. I got the portable heater going again. That's why it's noisy. But I'm not happy with the, how hot this pipe gets. Uh, I can't even touch it. It's just too hot for my comfort going through that wall. So I'm going to make a little thimble for it. So I just came back from the parts store. This is, a, I think, a six inch pipe. I don't need quite six inches. I'm going to pass a four inch pipe through here and uh, just insulate with insulation. Uh, uh, same thing I did up there for this wood stove pipe. Worked out good. That was a seven inch pipe with a six inch pipe going through it with insulation. Never had a problem. Uh, so I'm going to have to cut this down a little bit to make it five inches because I don't want six inches. I'm going to make it five inches and I'll pop everything back together. Cut it up to size. Show what that looks like in a second. Plugged in or uh, cut out. All right, five and a quarter. I'm gonna do a little bit bigger than five, uh, and then I can just do it like this. Just have this filled. See this? This will go through the wall. Have this filled with insulation. And the uh, reason I did five and a quarter because it sits into that ring pretty good. Uh, so I'll fill this gap in with insulation. Make it round here, and uh, that'll be the only thing touching the wall. The pipe won't be, and whatever's inside will be uh, just out in the open. So that'll work. Let me get that thing put back together. Uh, so just flanged everything over on this outside or inside pipe, whatever you want to call it. Cut a bunch of grooves and flanged it over. And now let's send this bugger through. And get to the other side there. There we go. And that'll. Uh, Fix that later. Fix that downspout, but let's go inside, hook her up. Yeah, so you have it on that side, or on this side rather. Uh, I got a stuff with uh, insulation on this side, so none of that hot pipe is touching, uh, other than the fiberglass, uh, you know, which is fireproof or heat, you know, it won't catch on fire. Uh, so I'm going to start this heater up and measure that silver pipe. You know, I, that thing uh, you couldn't even touch it. It's saying 98 degrees, 100 degrees on the on the thermometer, but well over that. You spit on it, the spit just ricochets off. So uh, the code on this, I say code, uh, the directions on this uh, thing said three. I, I saw five feet at, 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 at the end there, but it said three feet at first, as far as the distance needs to go to travel before you go through a wall. And it did say that single ply or single walled uh, pipe is fine. What minimum of three feet of travel? That's only two feet, so maybe that's why it was getting hot. Then I saw somewhere else in the directions a minimum of five feet, and I believe they both said uh, I have to look it up. Both said residential, so don't know what the deal on the the, the difference was, but uh, so that's that's where I'm at there. I'll show you the, the outside. So that's going to work good. All right, we're done out here. I got that plate on there and uh, put a little chicken wire over there, just pressure fitted, so uh, no birds call that home, and that's good. I ain't going nowhere. That that uh, wire probably just rest in place in a month or two <laughs> so I just got it bent around that's that's fine uh, so good now we're done with that let's go hook up some heat and then see if that uh, made a difference I know it did but let's just see so if you can hear me this pipe here is extremely hot watch this I'll, I'll dump a little water in there watch this there's the nozzle see there Extremely hot. You can't touch that. If you touch that, you'll lose skin. <laughs> Over here, on this thimble. This cools right off. Not even hot. Here, watch this. My hand up here. This is uh, maybe, maybe the temperature of a hand warmer on a snowmobile. If that, I mean, it is extremely, uh, it, it's just warm, basically warm. So there's no way that this wall is going to get hot anymore. This here, <laughs> just spit on, just spit on. Right here next to it, 
So right here you can touch this. You cannot touch that. That'll burn your skin off. Watch this. It is just extremely hot. Uh, so anyways, I wish I had a way to touch the, uh, the, the insulation won't burn. I've done this, uh, I've done this more than once and the difference is uh, in, in night and day from the temperature. So anyways, if you have a span like I do, less than three feet or five feet, whatever the code is, uh, and you're worried about your wall catching on fire like I was, <laughs> this is what you can do, is just pass, pass a pipe through a pipe and cramp it with, uh, cram it with uh, insulation. Yeah, so last piece of this puzzle, I just had to clean out some of this crap here, junk. So I think I want to put the bottle under here, it's under this roof area. Uh, and uh, my dog kind of, you know, he likes digging around here, it's not just dirt. I plan on cementing this one day, but until then I'm going to have to build some kind of rack for this bottle. Because I can't have, you know, put it on blocks or whatever. But the dog, he might be deep, he see could dig, he digs everywhere, but... Um, I don't need that bottle collapsing. Uh, so I'm probably just going to make a little stanchion here out of some angle iron. Run the pipe out. The, the heater's over here in this corner. Run a pipe out here somewhere. So I think uh, starting from the inside and then coming out and wherever I end up. Yeah, let me show you what I got so far. So the first thing I did was uh, uh, put a T off of here. And then, uh, of course, I use that gas tape. You can use that joint compound stuff for gas. But uh, so... I put the T on there and then it went with a half inch, uh, I'm, so it comes half inch out from the heater. So because my Home Depot carries half inch, they don't carry 3 eighths. I was going to get on a 3 eighths, but they don't carry 3 eighths pipe. They carry 3 eighths fittings, but so that's going to be easy for me to keep it half inch. So I went half inch here into a half inch little drip pipe here, but I did do a reducer here and put a plug on here for 3 eighths. So I think I pointed out earlier if I... If I run out of gas with a big bottle, just turn the valve off and I can use a little bottle through this orifice here. And they also make a kit, or I don't know if it's a kit, it's a special hose that you can transfer from one bottle to another. So let's say in the summertime where I'm not going to be running the heater, that thing might have 100 gallons out there, or 100 pounds, whatever they do for uh, fuel. And, uh, and I need it for my grill, I can use that apparatus to fill you know, a tank here. So that's why I did that for the 3 8 plug there. So above that, I... I put a, a, a union in, oops, where we're, a union, so we can undo it here if I need to, re, you know, this heater needs to come down for whatever reason, then you don't have to take all your pipe out, and of course the shutoff valve there, and I got an elbow going off of here, now, I measured it, it's looking like, it's like a perfect 24 inch pipe will do to get to the outside and be close to the wall on the outside, just lucked out that way, so Home Depot sells everything from uh, these these little things I'll show you in a bench are called close less than an inch so if you need to you know uh, just marry up stuff you can use these close deals and, and uh, so you know otherwise if you had an inch or two this thing would be a lot honest. I'll show you on a bench but uh, so they you, they go everything from close to an inch then they go inch and a half basically every half inch they have a pipe size for three and a half four so you know because if you don't have a pipe cutter it's going to be a pipe thread cutter or a pipe cutter to thread you know pipes to get an exact measurement through a wall and whatever uh, because they have these in half inch increments all the way up to six feet in length of pipe uh, you can pretty much do whatever you need to do with the pre-cut stuff and the pre-threaded stuff no need to have uh, you know anything uh, cut so don't as a do-it-yourself it works out great that way <laughs> so coming off of this that 90 you know going into uh, the wall there, like I said, I thought it was going to be just enough. It is just perfect. I'll have to show you on the other side. So I drilled it with a spade bit this way an inch, but had to do an inch and a quarter hole saw on the other side because, uh, let me take it on the other side to show you what I'm talking about. So originally I was going to do something else with this uh, piping. I was going to do it down and I drilled my hole way uh, about eight inches down, so I got to plug that. Unfortunately, I had to use a. Uh, you see how close this is? Had to use a, uh, a hole saw to get this hole because I didn't have an inch and a quarter spade bit. Fortunately, because now I have. I just uh, whittled it down a little bit. I've got this plug where I can plug this hole, so that'd be good. I'll put some glue in there and just mash it home. So, um, so this, it, like I said, it is. Just about flush. It's got a little bit of play. 
So when I put my uh, downspout here, it'll cock it out a little bit because I have to put a 90 down here. Otherwise, there wouldn't be you know room to turn a 90. You'll see. Maybe I'll set up the camera, but I think it's almost perfect. All right. So the last leg here, I'm gonna put from from there down. So I've got this set up this way. A little drip. Well, it'll go this way. A little drip edge or drip leg, right on the bottom. Can't go up that high. And then a T coming off for my for my uh, regulator and a shutoff valve. Uh, directions do say to put a union in there, but I don't feel the need to because this is going to be mounted directly on the wall there, and I've got a union on the other side in by the heater in case I need to disconnect and uh, remove the heater because. You know the way I'm going to do this with a pigtail. There's no reason to remove this pipe, even in the future, <laughs> if everything gets disconnected. Just leave it on the side of the building. Who cares? So I'm not going to put a union in there, but the T is just um, instead of an elbow because I wanted that drip leg in there, uh, just because if you want to add something later, you can that kind of thing. Anyways, let me uh, hook that up. <laughs> All right, so I bought two. Oops, I bought two bags of. Two bags of these, five, 10 or 15 or maybe 20 of them. Only need one. This thing is solid. Solid because um, just the way, you know, up there, the way it comes in, it is uh, such a tight fit. Everything's such a tight fit. Nothing's moving. So I just put the one there, and uh, that sucker ain't going nowhere. So this is your, one of those valves you pull out. So that's that's a shutoff valve. I like that it's outside and it's under. Uh, I think it's 12 inches or whatever it is so it's gonna be hidden there so let me get to uh, putting this uh, regulator off of here once I get the regulator off of here I think I'm gonna ho hook up a portable tank and start testing for leaks with a little bubble like a soap so deal test for leaks and then uh, this project will just about be done I do have to make a bracket here somewhere I'm still debating on whether I want to do it on this side of the fence uh, then I can use that gate over there or this side of the fence and just have to move crap out of the way to get to the tank I don't know all right unfortunately uh, the way I have to do this is uh, coming off that that T back and in the, in the, uh, where we just were so that's half inch so I'm gonna have to use this uh, half inch to three eighths coupler I don't know if you call it a coupler or whatever it's called so this plugs into the half inch and this plugs in the three eighths so we can screw this 3 8 uh, regulator in, right? I just uh, wish I had one that was closer, a little closer, because this is going to stick out a little bit. I don't want it sticking out past the E's, although they do include this little igloo, <laughs> so it's for outdoors. But uh, Home Depot didn't have anything shorter than this and 3 8 All right, last piece. We'll hit the tank up. So this piece came with the... Uh, uh, I didn't buy this piece, so this this is uh, so this hose came from Tractor Supply. I don't know what it's called. No part number on it, but um, found it at Tractor Supply and I made it work. But I had to get this is a three eighths, three eighths uh, fitting, and so I had to get a three eighths to a quarter inch, uh, male to female, right? And then same thing over here, but this was three eighths to quarter inch, uh, female to male, so in order to make this work. So this gets plugged into the obviously to the tank and this gets plugged in to the snipple, right? So this is the last piece. Uh, so made a couple basic L brackets and uh, the, the long piece will go towards the wall there. So, still a little warm. Uh, and then uh, what I'll do is uh, that when the two are joined I'll put a piece of plate across here and then uh, maybe a little angle. So when you're loading this thing, it's kind of hard to get an idea what I'm talking about. When you're loading this tank up here, uh, the, well, I'll have to show you when it's all put together, right? Ah, so something like that. So I'll mount it up. Uh, I think I got some aluminum plate I'm going to put there, a little slope to it, help this sucker because it's pretty heavy. We'll put a little slope to it, help it get on, and then uh, we'll have to, uh, I don't know, make some kind of bungee or strap or something uh, just to secure it but let me get to that aluminum plate and we're almost done here uh, so I just cut a piece of plate out and that'll be good like I said I put a little lip on it and there's some knots get on the other side of this from the scrap piece it came from so that'll work 
Uh, now I just want to drill some holes there and then drill some holes in that uh, brackets and I'll do that. Ah, it's done. Last piece of the puzzle. So it is extra wide. Uh, this 100 pounder will fit on there, I'm sure. Haven't uh, done it. I just unhooked the gas. Just going to do this in a second, but uh, I built it between the two studs, right? So it's like 18 something inches wide, but I'm pretty sure this will accept the 200 pounder if uh, I want to update it in the future. Although I got all I can do just to lift this sucker up, so then you'd have to get a service, I guess. <laughs> but I like this because now it's secured with the uh, put some stainless rivets in there, and now I can uh, undo this from the wall and put it anywhere I want. But for now, I'm going to leave it here, and that's probably where it's going to remain. So let me get this bottle up there, hook the heat back up. Uh, this this is uh, long enough. I think it's a three foot hose, long enough to go over the fence here and hook up with still a little bit of slack. Uh, but again, if, in the future, if I need to move this, put a 200 pounder, move it somewhere. I plan on doing an addition on the back, so that's in the you know in the future. But I can move this anywhere I want, and then run some black pipe, you know. So so it's all set up. This bottle's full. I filled up yesterday <laughs> from tractor supply. So I'm thinking, oh yeah, yeah. I don't think you're gonna get a 200 pound bottle up here by yourself. My guess is no. Yeah, there's plenty of room. Plenty of room for uh, for a bigger bottle. But my guess is uh, if you're going to get a bigger bottle, then you're going to need uh, a service to come fill your tank because that's pretty heavy. Um, even though there's a slope there to help it get it up there, double that weight, and there's no way I could do it. So. Uh, maybe they sell 135s or 140s and you might be able to do that, but anyways, that came out pretty good. Uh, let me get a strap around there, and then I'll do a summary and uh, get this video done, yeah? Alright, so the first thing I did was uh, trying to figure out where I wanted this heater. It's in this corner here. There's a door over there, and uh, obviously the door here. So I wanted to uh, kind of have the heat coming this way. So the first thing I did was build a um, little... A uh, couple of uh, beams going across there to tilt this heater at an angle so it'll it'll you know blow basically into the center of the room uh, the second thing I needed to do was uh, figure out electric and there there happened to be a junction box there for for this plug here so I was able to use that and I put a switch in there with a little light and uh, that goes to the fuse box so you know the heaters on and uh, the third thing I think I did was uh, because it's been a couple of days, I ran this uh, this uh, for for the thermostat on the back side here, uh, or maybe I ran a vent first. I'm not sure, but the thermostat goes over here to to this side, which uh, you know I wanted the thermostat as far as way far away as I can put it. So when it kicks on the heat, and then when obviously the temperature gets to a certain temperature, it'll kick it off. There, that's a cheap uh, twenty dollar thing that I bought at Ho Home Depot. That was the cheapest one I could find. And uh, the third thing, or whatever step we're up to, is running this uh, vent pipe. The vent pipe is just a four-inch pipe that comes out. Just a single wall, all you need, according to directions. Uh, but I found that, that this length, which I think the directions call for three to five feet or something like that, this is only two feet. So that pipe was actually pretty hot against that wall, so I ended up making my own thimble for um, a heat transfer. So that worked out good. And I think the next part was... Um, running the gas line and that obviously goes outside and uh, I got my tank on this side of the wall and my exhaust pipe on that side of the wall. Let's go out and take a look. Uh, so so the, uh, the the whole place is uninsulated so this is an 80,000 uh, BTU uh, heater and it's supposedly going to do uh, 1200 square feet. This is only I think 400 square feet just 24 by 24 whatever that equates to. Can't do math. <laughs> So out here, um, I've got the uh, the exhaust pipe coming out on this side. Like I said, I had to do a little thimble action because I didn't like the way this uh, heat was touching the wall. Uh, because with my wood stove, <laughs> it's been a while since I used it. I, I did a thimble there too, but I almost had a fire, and you can almost see the uh, the, the burnt stuff. Uh, so the pipe got too hot coming through there before I did a thimble. But I haven't used this in years. That's why it's all rusted and falling down. But uh, so. So there's the exhaust pipe and then uh, the gas line coming through here and I found this uh, uh, regulator at Tractor Supply because there's no 
in the directions there's nothing as far as what you're supposed to use for a, a, a regulator and uh, as far as tanks go whatever that's a hundred pound tank or hundred uh, gallon no hundred pound tank you know how uh, propane uses it but this works out good and I've got this little uh, this is also from um, tractor supply it's just a little connector and I had to do some uh, adapters to to marry things up and then uh, I built this little stanchion here because uh, just just because I, I have plans on doing something with this uh, you know putting cement in this uh, little carport area which is obviously a mess with junk so I can move this thing it's just bolted uh, between two two studs I can move this thing anywhere I need to it comes off it's a one-piece unit uh, I can move it on this side of the fence whatever I need to do but so that worked out good and that's basically all there is to this thing <laughs> I say that but it took me two days I think two two or three days to uh, get things done and uh, if you want to look at the whole video have at it but that's in a nutshell is what I did to uh, to uh, install this heater